All right, welcome to the Monday Night Men's Forum. I'm Matt of Farm Hop Life. Tonight we got Christopher of SecureCoop.com. We got Jeremy, do we like donuts? We have Homestead of Pain. Uh, his name's Grant, I guess. And then uh, Padre just jumped on. How's it going, guys? What's up? Padre, Jeremy. How's it going? Padre, did you figure out your microphone settings? Um, Maybe. They sound great. I think. We can hear him. Good. So, um, so tonight we're talking about making lemonade, and I'm glad Padre can make it because he's like he's constantly he's constantly making lemonade, like so, literal literal lemonade or figurative. Lemonade. He probably makes a pretty mean lemonade. He's probably gonna make mean goat lemonade. <laughs> I mean, I got a margarita. I, I I got. I mean, I can do like a lemonade. A uh, bloody lemonade. mary. Oh, oh that's bad. Oh, that's bad. Yeah, I heard get, get out of here. Just leave. I heard, All you, right, man. You, I heard somebody say one minute. time. I heard somebody say one time when life gives you lemons, find somebody whose life gave them vodka, get together and have a party. That's right. Yeah. That's that's better than just making lemonade on your own. All right. Let's do let's do some personal events. Christopher, go ahead. Yeah, uh, I, uh my my stepdad is coming down and so I got a, my buddy uh, the homestead down the road. I go over to his house and we do chores. He comes over to my place and we do chores. And so we're we're uh, putting in a compost toilet right here in the little RV. And we'll be able to be able to use this this place, uh, and then we'll have ourselves another bathroom. So I'm excited. It's the about little that. things, right? Yeah, it's the little things. I'm excited about that, and um, more Thank beta you. testing on Secure Coop. Found some pretty crazy, serious bugs. That was one of them was really hard to fix, but I got it, and so we're getting nice. down the road. Yeah, you find those. You want to find those things now before you get paying customers. So yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Grant, go ahead. Um, I, I don't even know where to start. I've had some things die, some really important plants die that I didn't want dead. Uh, oh. My girlfriend's grandfather was in the hospital, so I was up there for four days uh, staying with her, um, and uh, that's when they died. And then my pigs keep getting out because I put them in the pasture because I decided to keep them. But they just walk around the house. They don't really disturb anything. They're blind and it's retarded. They can't smell or see shit. Your pigs? Yeah, yeah. So. And why are they? Why are they blind? And and I mean, like. I don't know. I throw food in their face, and they just be just sniffing the ground and walking forward. So they're not literally there. blind. They just. They're dumb. They're just dumb. Kind of sounds like you cat, need to have less pigs. And yeah, I would love only less one way pigs. to do that. I'm I was gonna wait till like November till it's cooler. I, mean, I got a freezer uh, if you want to put one in there. And the, I I mean, if you want one, you can come. I mean, you can like skin them. I just bought a half a hog. A few weeks ago, uh, yeah. don't you want a whole one alive? Yeah, not right now. So it's I not cut in it. half. <laughs> just like put it down like the 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 table saw, cut it in half. Alive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, sick. Do that. You're sick. Nope. I got four more. Maybe for today. the goat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Padre's got a goat he can give you. Mm. Let's uh, let, let's let's hit Jeremy and then Padre. Jeremy, go ahead. Uh, well, mine's kind of along the same line. So, yeah, we did buy a, a half of a haul. We split it with someone. Uh, oh, yeah. And so it's like 200, 150, 200 pounds of pork. But then today I went and put down a uh, deposit on half a cow. So that's pretty awesome. Whoa. Stoked about that. Nice flex. I would love, I, hopefully in the next three years I'm growing those. It. Uh, I want to. I just don't have the land for it. Um, I mean, we have it. We just can't use it yet. I actually paid for a cow a year ago, and it's and there's no the butcher that we were using, uh, is, had to shut down, oh. and the so he so my cow was still sitting out in the field about an hour from here chewing grass because we've got nowhere around here wow. to, to butcher. We're we're, wait, we're in in the waiting. There's line a waiting for, list. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what the, the one so, for another butcher. So we uh we ordered ours last August, but they didn't require a. Uh, a deposit until they went hmm. to start they, until they went on to uh Damn, finished cats. feed or something sorry man the cat's like licking my ankle <laughs> oh you have a cat i got a cat now i didn't want a cat but i have one jeez man um but uh so i had to get put on the deposit today and, and we'll have it in august so i'm pretty stoked about that nice it's gonna be a lot of meat shoot the one yeah. oh is owed to shoot it what yeah take it yeah 
Yeah, if I had to, I would just go back, go go to the guy's house and bring my twenty two. But uh, not to that point yet. Yeah, but... Apps. No. I would like to get to the point where I can process them for people and they just pay me in cash and nobody needs to know. Mobile processing. <laughs> Mobile processing. I mean, I'll pay you for a yeah. hog, man. Yeah. You I process mean, a hog for me. I'll now you gotta you gotta smoke the bacon too though. Uh, hey, look, I, we're, we have a huge, like, old propane tank that we want, I want to turn into a smoker. Nice. It's got a trailer, trailer and everything. Yeah, so, uh, new things around here, um, we just had a, a financial increase to our farm, which is great. Uh, my wife just graduated with her doctorate's degree. She just got hired at a new place, and her, her, her salary is going up forty thousand dollars a year. Hell so, yeah! Nice. Uh, other than other than that, I've been trying to find creative ways of keeping goats in a fence. <laughs> That's got to take a big burden off your shoulders, right? It's going to take a huge burden off of us. A leash. Now you can either afford to shoot the goat that got into your garden and wiped <laughs> out all the crops, or just abandon all the crops. Oh, he's he's gonna have to get creative to get out right now. Him and him and both the babies, because he's buried in the dirt. <laughs> <laughs> we had a goat get out. Uh, my my brother in law down the street. We had their uh, garden. <clears throat> we had a garden at their house last year, and, and thankfully it was like September, but their goats got out and just devastated the garden. Yeah, well, this goat. one uh, I watched. So we have we have electric netting fence, the, mm -hmm. the sheep thing, and I watched him twice. He gets out the same way. He gets his nose under the bottom bottom line, which is not electrified, you know, because it's touching the ground. And right. then he turns his head sideways and pushes under it. Mm. So he currently has a piece of a broken shovel handle duct taped to his horns. <laughs> <laughs> we need hold up. We need we need a picture. We need a picture in the Telegram. Is there a picture of this? Is this posted somewhere? Is this in the Telegram group? It, it is not. I will I will get pictures in the morning. Yeah, come on. Ah, oh, all right. We need okay. that. Not a man. Done that, and then the two babies. Um, you ever make your kids hold hands when they're not getting along? Yeah. So uh, we we put collars on the baby goats, and then uh, tied a four foot piece of rope between them. Huh. And as uh, <laughs> which didn't work at first because they were wrapping up on everything. So I took a piece of half inch PVC pipe and, and put it on the the rope through the PVC pipes. Now they can't tangle up on anything. There you go. And uh, they don't work together very well. They so, will so before far, it's all said and done. So I know, but so far since about three o'clock this afternoon, I've not had a goat escape. <laughs> you could, you could make like a like an octagon or like a hexagon of goats and just have like a mobile goat herd thing, and just kind of like they all have like their own little space, and you can just like move the sticks wherever you yeah. need wherever you need your goats. There they be. Or like tie them up like that, like daisy chain all of them together, but then drive a post into the ground for the on the on the last one. And all they do is they'll just go in circles all the way around it, <laughs> like the uh, uh, huh. That's not a bad idea. And then get all autistic about it, and then space them out so like it's like a Fibonacci sequence, like one, one, two, three, five, <laughs> blah blah blah. So might make a cool like, pattern, like, or fractals like or crop something. circle looking stuff. Yeah. <laughs> New new business endeavor. Just have random patterns of goats and just leave, unleash them into a field. See what happens. I've been uh, well. I've been considering doing something similar. I've been thinking about getting a uh, small flock of sheep. Called sheep 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 obey the fence. They're not stupid like goats. And they'll eat grass. And um, renting More them out. Goats. So take the electric fence netting. It's very mobile. I got a small box I can put on it and renting them out to people who want cleared or brush cleared but they don't want to pay to have a bush hog come in or anything like that stick goat or sheep there for a week and and just let them go at it man i've been thinking about getting goats and sheep like a lot the last week or two we have so much cheat grass here it's uh i hate it so for anybody that isn't familiar cheat grass is like this really fast growing weed and it sends up tons of seeds and that stuff like when it gets dry it sticks to everything I mean, like, 
you you think like wearing long pants and boots are like enough to like keep the cheek grass from like getting like in your boots and like stuck to your socks? Nope, it finds mm -hmm. a way. I don't know how. Like it's yeah. I hate that stuff. And I was reading like I spent about thirty seconds looking into it. You can trick goats and sheep and even cows into eating cheat grass if you spray it with molasses so it's sweet. But you also need to do it at the right time of year because if it gets too dried out, um, it gets too pokey. It, it hurts their mouth. Hmm. So it's that's that's bad because my goats and sheep eat blackberry, wild blackberry vines like they're nothing. Hmm. Can you use uh dwarf goats or nigerian whatever the small pygmy goats whatever them are can you use them for meat at some point yeah or they i just hate nigerians body? no they're they're dual purpose they're a meat goat i just can't stand them why is that me either and that's what i have they look ugly in the face they look ugly <laughs> they're small ugly retarded you want to go get a real goat i hate that's them all. for different reasons <laughs> why do you hate them padre <laughs> Because they won't stay out of my garden. Oh, well. And I would, I would assume the smaller the goat, the easier it is for them to get out of your fence. This stupid goat. So I planted over 100 hot pepper plants. And I'm talking Carolina Reapers, oh, Apocalypse wow. Scorpions, hot. Like, if you mess with the leaf enough, it'll it'll burn your skin. You know, you wear gloves to work the plant. Nice. Um, he stripped them. Just, <laughs> didn't, didn't Spicy touch, goat meat. Yeah, didn't touch the cucumbers. Didn't Marinated for the last uh, pre, six days. Pre-season your, pre yeah. your goat. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what my son said. I texted him earlier. I said, uh, we lost our reapers to uh, a bendigo. It's a goat's name. And uh, it's a Medea joke. But uh, he goes, pre-season goat. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Is it going to recover, or is it gone? Those those uh, they're, peppers, they're, they're gone. I'm I'm going to reseed and, and and hope I can get a harvest at the end of the year. They grow but so like, quickly. That lineage is that like so you can you can get because I'm assuming that you uh you kind of uh, select breed these peppers yourself like hand pollinate or whatever to get whatever variety you want make it spicier or hotter or whatever you're looking, whatever characteristics you're looking for. You do that on your own. I, I do. I spend time out there with a toothbrush moving pollen from one to another. Damn. Yeah. I go. But now, I've heard, I've heard okay. that there's some certain toys that slide on your finger and vibrate that, uh, do that better. <laughs> <laughs> I have Never not heard it. about this. Never tried it. Just heard it. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah, and, and what part of the uh, web were you browsing when you? As the old ticket, as the old tickety talk. I think I'm going to start selling them on my web store. Just the Farm Hop Life approved pollinator. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe there's a toothbrush at the end of it. I don't know. Or whatever. Brush, brush your teeth real quick. Um. Yeah, so, so I this, spent a lot of time on those peppers. I, I am the only grower of those on the Gulf Coast down here. Oh wow. So that's kind of my wild. my crop getting wiped out hurts. I mean you're still growing them. Just they're just not doing very good. Because like with peppers, I mean like you can top your peppers and they'll come back. But are these so why would these not come back? Uh, they're still seedling. Yeah, uh, well, there you go. Um, they um, they grow slow. I mean, it takes yeah. thirty days on average just to sprout. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, they're they've been growing for three months now, and they're only four inches tall. Whoa, that's they, pretty they slow. Grow, they grow slow to probably mid June, early July, and then they just go crazy. But they now that all peppers are just those variety. The, the hotter the pepper, the slower they grow. That's weird. I've got Why is that? Is that because of the capsaicin in it or something? I'm I'm assuming. I don't know the science behind that, but yeah. I've got from years of doing it, that's my observation. The hotter they are, the probably the climates that where they originally came from. So I've well, got the reaper was developed in South Carolina, I believe. Yeah. Hmm. Or maybe I don't know. All my peppers are slow. I don't have anything nearly as hot as you've got, but 
Um, yeah, I got bell peppers, and that's enough for me. I got jalapenos. Same. I got some I'm white people spicy. <laughs> I got I got some Real KS true. white top white top peppers, some shishito peppers and bell peppers. But that's about it. Oh, cow horn peppers too. Yeah, there's actually a, a a bigger market down here than I thought there was. But I'm in Cajun country too. Everybody likes everything spicy. Mm-hmm. Sure. Where are you where are you at, Biloxi? I am. Uh, I'm about thirty minutes from Biloxi. Okay. About an hour from New Orleans. About South Mississippi is what I was thinking. Yeah. I'm 16 miles north of the Gulf of Mexico. Nice. Yeah. So um, this weekend, I uh, I was moving rock again all weekend. I, I'm actually getting tired of filming, so I, I just don't even. I I kind of film stuff, and I just don't even. It's like. How how many videos can I possibly make of me just moving rock here and there? Like I'll throw a couple photos up and like here's what what I'm working on. But like honestly, it's getting old. <laughs> it's, it's getting, like the the moving of the rock is getting boring, and recording of the moving of the rock is getting boring. So I'm just like, maybe I'll use this at another time. I don't know. I'm over it, but it's looking it's looking good so far. Um, what are you doing with the rock? Besides I'm moving, I'm so it? happy you asked, Jeremy. Uh, let me let me let me pull give up. It, uh, give it a solid whiplash there, man. The Twitter. Sorry, I I, ch- I need to get my camera higher, and so like my laptop's up on like a, a milk crate that I made. Um, I noticed you're in a different spot this week. What do you mean? When you don't I'm have gonna... this, your normal like backdrop and all that kind of stuff. Oh, you you haven't been on in a couple weeks. Yeah, I moved up to the loft for the most part. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I bailed yeah. on you for a few weeks. Yeah, that's fine. Kind of I, I, I would too if my name wasn't on it. So here, uh, let's see here. How do I share this stupid thing? Only do it every week. <laughs> this thing right here. So here's here's what I got going on here. Um, Corey. Yep, down the side, down the side of the house here. Got it like rounds out. And so we've got, uh, let's see, there's this. And then there's da, 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 da. nope, that's that's somebody else's thing. Right. Here we go. This is what we want. So down the side of the house, you got all these like gabions or I don't know how they're pronounced. But anyways, yeah. we're gonna mulch this and put plants in it and some elderberry and serviceberry to start. Um so that's what we got going on. And nice. you got all now, the rocks out of your ground? Yep, these are all out of the ground, all of them. Wow. That is amazing to me. So that's kind of why I came up with the title for tonight is uh, Make Lemonade, obviously. Got lemons, make lemonade. I got a lot of rocks, so I use them uh, everywhere for this, that, and the other thing. Primarily that rock wall. But So like, it starts all the way at the front of the house and curves around down the side, and it's coming around to the back side of the house. Now it's going to be a lot of rock. And then on the other side, I'm going to... Ha- make some steps out of railroad ties and the steps are going to be kind of spaced apart a little bit in, in between the, the treads, I guess you'd call them risers, I guess, uh, Mm -hmm. there's going to be, uh, that's going to be filled with rock too. So you just keep finding more and more uses for rock because I have it. It's free. It's just crazy labor intensive. Yeah. Down here, that's thousands and thousands of dollars of rocks. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that's so wild no. yeah. can i can i sell them at a premium like montana rocks oh yeah. my i'm telling you probably could i'm serious the transportation <laughs> costs will eat you up well i got uh i got pallets yeah that's true it's because of the weight that'd be yeah i need a matter compressor Just, yeah you, you, you'd, have to sell them, you'd have to sell them by the tractor trailer load yeah i got lots of and pallets i can just crate them really wouldn't surprise me if you were actually able to now, I live on a coastal <laughs> plain. There, there. I've not seen a rock in a decade. <laughs> oh wow! I live on a rock shelf. Like just, I tried to plant fruit trees a while back, and I got about eighteen inches, and I was like, "Oh, there's a rock. This tree's there going go. here anyway." Wow. And they didn't survive then. I mean, so far they're good. I just planted them like two months ago. Oh, Look, we, okay, gotcha. We but it's like it's, it's like church, so it's not like. 
like the the roots should be able to get through some of it. Sure. Fine. I mean, there's trees up. I mean, I've got I've got 12, 18 inch diameter pine trees up here. Like they should be all right. We spent four days in a Virginia National Park last week, and my daughter was just bringing me rock after rock. Daddy, look what I found. Daddy, 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 Daddy what is this? <laughs> <laughs> Daddy, I've never seen one of these before. I've never seen one of those before. <laughs> she brought several home. <laughs> Take them all home. Y'all, yeah. y'all, hey, you got the only house with rocks down there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're rock rich in your neighborhood. But yeah, that's that's kind of that, that that's been the biggest thing lately is, uh, is is all the rock just figuring out what to do with it, make it look nice. So what's uh so the other thing I was thinking for, of this topic was um was Grant and his totes. I mean, he had access to totes. Mm -hmm. And so he's just like, "Well, hell, I'll just make this work. I'll just use yeah. these things for race beds." It's just a matter uh, of filling well, them. Yeah, so the whole thing with those are it was, I think it was actually my dad's idea. He had access to them at where he worked, and that's where I got mostly all of them. And then uh, I ended up a really good family, longtime family friend from church. They ended, they they use them at their place. So he ended up hooking me up there, and then I ended up getting a job there. Um, we we just picked up four more. I hadn't gotten some in a couple months, but I ended up uh, just getting some more tonight. Um, but other than other than those, I really can't think of anything really that i have made lemonade from um pretty much if anything goes bad in my i just kind of like well it is what it is um and just kind of either spin it some way or go on to the next thing hey i got a i got a question for you grant on those totes how do you fill all those with dirt because that's a lot of dirt okay so what i do it's I take i'm sorry a, I completely changed subjects I, yeah um i pull a page from the germans and um oh whoa 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 <laughs> Calm so, <laughs> down here. Hey, don't get us banned. Don't Hugo, get us banned. Hugo culture is uh, so it's a top. It's basically yeah. a way to fill the beds. So that's I would like them. to do some Hugo culture beds out of like old pines when I start clearing land. Dig down, put these huge old pines in like a little triangle, and then build raise build big, big berm beds like that. Mm -hmm. um, I'll fill because they're about three and a half feet tall. So you're filling the them ground. with like sticks and leaves and brush. I'm filling with logs, logs. I'm whole yeah. logs. Um, I ran out. Well, I ran out of stuff to put in, so I ended up using some of Dad's firewood um, that we cut. He <laughs> didn't like that, but I helped load it and stack it. So, uh, and, and then half yours? Uh, not half, maybe like ten percent. So, uh, I then I go get dirt. I buy I buy your dirt by the by the yard. I get contractor price. I've gotten about eighty yards of dirt. It's not cheap by all means. It's basically become a hobby. Um, again, you look at seventy yards of dirt times what I pay for that dirt. It's like twenty five hundred dollars in dirt, but that's eighty like raised dirt. beds. So you know, and it's all good growing dirt. Um, mm -hmm. it pretty much just, ke it's, it's kept me busy and helps me process things. Okay. It's not a profitable I just, garden. I just noticed that you had all those totes out there and I was like, that's a lot of dirt that he's got to fill those with. Yeah. So I was just, I was just sure. curious, which is, that's how I filled my raised beds too, is Hugo culture ish. I mean, it's, you know, I, I had some old logs that I put in the bottom, some leaves, some compost. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What I would like to do is, um, kind of. Well, yeah, but I don't know where I can get enough Compost. of that. Is um, not for eighty, not for eighty grade, uh, not for eighty raised beds. That's for sure. Yeah, and not for like thirty dollars a yard. Um, there's some chicken houses over here. I'm sure you can get some from there. That or horse manure. But either way, is uh, go around in the summer, and if I had a truck, I'd do it. But get all the bags of cut grass, grass clippings, well, wood mulch. You could probably put Careful, up. That stuff, that stuff's all sprayed. That's what I was gonna say. I know it, some of it is, and I, and um, yeah. but I could pr I could probably kind of let it compost out into like a bedding for my pigs. I can just dump all that in there. You they trying to kill your pigs? It, tromp it down. Um, trying to get them cancer. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. I may not. But Third if I get year. somebody who can deliver me wood chips, <laughs> I can fill maybe a hundred more raised beds full of wood chips. Give it a year, and it'll decompose into dirt. 
Well, Grant, there's a um, a guy on YouTube, David Goodman, and he talks about uh, how to detect grazon in the manure. So you could even get that manure. And what the the, the trick is just you, you throw some bean seeds in, beans in there, and it, it'll if it uh, if you give it a month, if they start to look all all uh, wrinkly and weird looking, then you've got grazon in there because beans mm. are the most sensitive. Okay. So just look up David David the Good on grazon. All right. All right. What is grazon? Uh, that's the 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 the, the, prim, the worst pesticide that is like sticks they, around, goes through your gut. You're supposed to be it. Like they claim that you can leave cows on the field and spray your field with it. Hence, like grazon. You don't have to take your cows oh, off the pasture no. to spray and then yeah. bring them back. So like like oh yeah, it's nasty. totally safe. Yeah, it's it's well, nasty, it's nasty stuff. stuff. There's a big. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, why would you spray your pastures and then put your cows? Like I, I mean, they're out there to eat all that stuff. It, it goes through their digestive tract on uh, supposedly right. untouched. Right, right, right. But like, but what's the What's the purpose of even spraying your? I mean, like your cows are going to eat. Oh, I don't. Uh, they don't eat everything. There's probably there's a good bit of broad that stuff that they don't the, touch. The grain, yeah, the grazon doesn't kill everything. It just kills. The, it kills the, things the stuff that, the that cows they don't, don't eat. eat. They just kills. Well, what get they you don't a goat eat, or a so. sheep, and they'll eat the rest of it. Yeah, but, yeah. but see, but you're you're preaching to. I, I know. I can't. Stand I can't. Stand I can't. I can't. Preaching to the preacher. I yeah. mean, because. It's just big industrial agriculture. Nobody rotates pasture like they don't rotate oh, pastures or yeah. animals. You need to auto rotate animals through. So, yeah. Uh, Grant, I got, I got something you made into lemonade. Okay. Time with your nana. Yeah. So, yeah. Again, I was paid. I got to do what I want, but that that became more valuable to me than I thought it would would be. Um, yeah. I think that's great. Yeah. Even if you weren't paid. Paid in uh, stories and special time with her. Yeah, there's she, and, and if you if you want to look at that more so as in blessings, I mean there's a, a lot of things other than her. I mean I didn't want to go back to school. I, I, I'm I currently hate it, but if I hadn't been if that's not where I had been guided and put then I wouldn't have met my my current lady, and yeah, that, I mean, so current, like these, there's going to be another one. <laughs> the, uh, well, hope, I was thinking well, it. There I will wasn't going to say yeah. it. <laughs> she and she'll she'll probably see this. Tomorrow. No, I mean, there there are all these things that I guess it just it happens because right now I'm currently taking five classes this summer semester, and it's miserable. Uh, I, I hate, I don't hate, you can't hate, it's very strong. I dislike the teacher and the way he teaches because he's not teaching. Um, and then this, he's like 64, and but my floral design teacher, he's 78, and he comes around and in the first 10 minutes of class, I've learned more than I have all week. And and he, he ended up stopping by today. It wasn't even his day to be there. He shouldn't have even been there. He stopped by and ended up giving us a whole lesson on pruning and how to prune and how to work with more plant your plant materials to know your shrubbery and the landscape. Because you can design a landscape where you don't where it doesn't require any maintenance. You just hmm. need the, the right plant and the right placement. And nice. he has reinvigorated me in this because it's it's a different learning and teaching that gives me passion because he has passion for it. My teacher's an old row crop farmer. He, he wants to retire this guy. He's 78 from upstate New York. You know, he's was the president of the new, like New York farmer school board. He, an impressive man, an extremely impressive resume. And he knows how to teach it. Passion yeah. Definitely. That really shows. All right. What was that Padre? The passion definitely makes a difference. It does. It really does. And and when you're not treading water for big farm, not big farm. Well, big farm, not big farm, but just big farm, big agriculture. When you're not treading water on pesticides and and stuff like that, I mean, you don't need a tractor to run a homestead. You don't need a tractor to to grow a market garden. Sure. Nope. And so, if you're intentional and and you're managing it the right way you know mm -hmm. and, and i could feed 200 families off two acres if i am smart enough and have enough time to put in on 50 acres i can probably feed a whole lot of people you know what else you don't need goats 
Good. I see. I disagree with you, Padre. I love goats. Uh, their little triangle eyes have worked their way into my soul. I don't think I could ever oh. live without them. Oh, Good he done, he done got soft. No, yeah. man. I'm a goat man. I'm a goat guy. Goats I want. And I want some of those goats, goats that have like four horns and uh, sell the skulls on Etsy. I'm for pretty premium. sure that's a sheep. Four. So there is the Jacob sheep that does have the four horns, but I thought like, you know, like those, like, uh, oh, yeah. pa Padre, you're going to like this, like those Satanists that want to have like, uh, you know, cool skull for whatever. Oh yeah. That have like for four their horns. Baphomet worshiping. Yeah. Whatever. I'll sell them a goat skull I'll for a thousand bucks. Look, look, I'll take anybody's money. I have sold goat skulls to, uh, uh, Norse pagans. There you Not go. Hey, give me some domestic beetles. I'll I'll get the flesh cleaned off of them. I'll do them a good European mount and get them moved on. I just said it on the fire ant mount and the fire ants do the work. Yeah, that's I guess do, yeah. I guess that's the only thing they're probably good for. Yeah, fire. Ants, I actually, yeah. I actually took a, a sheep skull last year, and when I was building up my compost pile, you know, from the wood chips and the chicken poop. I put the sheep skull right in there and it had like, you know, it still had like the eyeballs, eyeballs and a couple of other fleshy things like all stuck to it and stuff. It was all dried out. I put that right in the center and piled it up two to three months later. Man, that thing was as clean as ever. Um, hmm. You know, like those horns, even like the, the black part, like actually like pops off. So yeah. like, so I don't know if you guys knew that, 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 uh, so like when you, you know, you drink out of like a horn or something like that from like a, like a Viking, but like a bison or buffalo horn. Yeah. Like most of the time, like that thing, it kind of like fell off. I don't, I don't think I have a picture of it as an example. Just to but. you know, derail this even more. Um, <laughs> did you, it's just a, another fun fact is that poison dart frogs are not naturally poisonous. They're poisonous because they eat fire ants and other and other things. It's the food they eat that huh. makes them poisonous. Huh. So I know someone with poison dart frogs, and I can get some fire ants if y'all need Even those, some poison. Even those frogs dart are frogs. making lemonade. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. They, yeah. You know? Lemonade frogs. See, it's Wait, like completely off can, topic. You think I can sell bit. fire ants? <laughs> sell <What>? fire ants? <laughs> I mean, no. <laughs> that, <laughs> you that, 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 do it yourself poison <laughs> dart frog kit. Here's yeah. a frog. Yeah. Here's, yeah. A, here's <laughs> a frog. Here's a frog. Yeah, oh. See, and then and then, and then and then you have your neighbor sell the blow the blow guns. There you and, go. Um, Perfect. What do you think? Uh, so uh, so Christopher or Jeremy, did you have did you have uh, some lemonade examples to share? I I had um, I, I kind of I went like way back. So like when I started thinking about this earlier, I was like, what what experience have I had that kind of stands out to me and. And I'm sure there's been plenty of them along the way. But like one of the big ones was like the 2008 housing crash. And yeah, we lost, like we, we got married in 07 and then 08, like just lost 30% value in our home. That was our, <clears throat> it was our first home. Like, like it was, it hurt. Like, but you know, we had a five year plan, which turned into a 10 year plan. But, but like through all of that, like that, got me started on my prepping journey, which then led into homesteading. So like that was just a, I, mean, I don't know if you can call it lemonade, lemons to lemonade, but just more or less, you know, being opportunistic and learning and, and adapting. Um, but like, I wouldn't be where I am today if it wasn't for that. So. My story of becoming a full-time homesteader is very similar to yours. Yeah. It's just, the realization that wow like we are dependent on this system that i mean it's fragile and um you know now we've got debt we've got cars and how like we've got a house payment and, and car payments but like that's it but i mean yeah i'd love to get out of those but it is what it is but um you know but if you can get if you can pay all that down and, and live kind of debt free and you could live off the land i mean you got to I mean, you are independent. Are you guys still in that house or you guys moved now? No, we moved. Um, we're 45 minutes away from there. We ended up in a house that's, I don't love the house, but it's got a basement, which is something that I really wanted. Hmm. And um, and a little bit more land, not much. I mean, we're still, I mean, gosh, on a third 
of an acre. I mean, like it's small, but we you can do a lot on a third of an acre if you're intentional yep. about it. So how right. long between that? So like your 10 year plan, did that actually take 10 years then? So, I mean, our five year plan was we wanted to buy this starter house and it was a brand new house. And, uh, I think we paid like 138,000 for it. It was like a hundred, it was like, it was like revalued at a hundred reappraised at 105 or a hundred thousand dollars, like within two years. And so five years, we wanted to get out and get into a little bit of a bigger house with a little bit more land. And then, uh, it took 10 years for us to get out of that house for us to be able to recoup what we had lost. Yeah. But thankfully like we didn't go under and we didn't have to, you know, we weren't foreclosed on our house or anything like that. But, um, but yes, yeah, so when I say it five year plan turned into a 10 year plan, it just meant it, it took 10 years for us to be able to get out. And, and so yeah, now we're in a little bit of a bigger house, a little bit more land. A bigger yard, better area, and so on and so forth. But the next step is to end up with several acres that we can truly like go all in and homestead. What's the date on that? Another two, another it. ten. <laughs> so, in the state of Alabama, if you don't pay your property taxes, they sell your property. Yep. Same. Here. I have a, I have a few of those that I've got my name on properties that you bought because somebody else didn't pay their taxes or because you didn't pay your taxes because they know i pay my taxes because uh, they didn't pay their taxes so i've got to mm. hold on to those for long enough before i can own them so when i own those then i will have acreage see i would that's something i would be interested nice. in looking at can you do that if you're out of state i don't see why not huh. um what was that christopher is it like an option to buy? Like you can't you, you can't buy it and take ownership of it today. They had right they had right of redemption for five years. Five years, okay. How about so that? You, uh, don't, up, and you don't get up your money to back. Five years. Okay. Yeah, I do. Oh, you do. Plus twelve percent. So whoa, 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 like an what? investment to me. How do you get twelve percent? That's, that's how the, that's how the law reads in Alabama. So like you're paying somebody property. else's property taxes, and if they start paying their property taxes, if they claim again, right of redemption, they have to pay me back plus twelve percent of what I've paid. I feel they like I personally to have to pay you. In Alabama property. Whoa! Wow, oh, that's crazy. Nice. Yeah. So, so sounds like is. you're making lemonade out of somebody else's lemons, but right? that's it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> He's repossessing the lemons and just throwing them in a juicer. <laughs> There's actually a property down the street that um, I'm watching it like every week uh, because they're they're delinquent on their taxes. And it's like it would be a perfect property. It's three acres, three and a half acres. It's all flat. Adjacent <clears throat> adjacent to family. But imagine if you have enough spare income where you could pay like, you know, maybe 12 people's property taxes. And then maybe say you get half of those come through bam 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 you now have a lot of property you can either turn around and flip yeah. or mm -hmm. use to you know loan against the bank and keep that thing rolling that's that is some heavy there's there's a know. plan there there's a plan there grant and, and what are they what are they charge for the property I may talk like about auction? That later, but whatever the, whatever the past due taxes okay you just have to pay the taxes so like the property that we've got is three acres Man. and uh, I have paid to look into that. Sixty-eight hundred dollars for it. I'm looking at it right now. Okay, send some links. Yeah. Well, this is for Montana. I don't give a damn about Florida. I don't know, but I don't. I don't know if you can do that. I wanted to see my Alabama. <laughs> just, just it's, squat on Jeremy. <laughs> hey, there's Jeremy, nothing out. There's nothing hey, out there right now. My whole operation's on three acres, so nice. Definitely doable. Yeah, I, I, I believe definitely it. Doable. Um. That uh, so that's yeah so what what's the the timeline on getting to there? Hopefully within the next five to ten years. Well, I mean five or less, right? Maybe sooner. I'd like to have it sooner, but the the three acres that we have isn't ideal because it's not all flat. Okay. So well, my 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 plan have, would guys. be to to own that property free and clear, and then turn around and sell it, and then go buy property that i really really want sure i gotcha that's cool 
that's that's a nice that's a nice lemonade hack right there. No kidding, yeah. Christopher, did you have one? Yeah, I got two of them. All right, let's hear uh, it. Well, I'm sitting in one of them. You remember the story I told you know for the audience? I'll I'll keep it real brief. Uh, the the story of we got this RV here. We we're gonna go travel the uh, uh, travel around and see sights and stuff and uh, yeah uh, and just like horrors. Everything went wrong. Like everything went wrong. It was just like uh, uh, like a national lampoon. I was just laughing. Like what else can possibly go wrong? You know. <laughs> so uh, you know we got this. Now you got this thing and uh, it never got to really travel it. it was like they did like two trips with it, but. It's an office. It's a second bathroom now. It will be a uh, second kitchen and uh, got your second toilet. Second toilet and second no, shower. No, it's, it's a turlet, man. It's Come a turlet. <laughs> it's a turlet. And uh, uh, it, it also is a it is our like backup house if the main RV, uh, you know, were catch fire or tornado or something. Everybody can cram into here, and we just make it do. Because there's like eight or ten beds in this RV. It's a little RV, short, twenty-five footer, but it's got so much, so many beds in it. It's crazy. Um, like over here is uh, four beds in this front bedroom. It's a whole bedroom over here. And then they're gonna, two. they're gonna start. Uh, DeSantis is gonna put a bunch of uh, immigrants <laughs> right, right in your camper. Yeah. Well, I mean, you out, give you a little holiday in voucher you're not far from it i've i've told my i talked to my cousin because you Please know they're they're up in the city and they're not and they're they're, they're prepper minded but they don't have anywhere they'd really go and i said to him i hope that it would work out you guys could come here and stay with us so they could stay here you know and so we're just you know we got power in numbers yeah yep uh so uh it, 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 it i'm glad we have it it was yeah it was a, a good I, one i, I gotta ask this some, is is desantis really like trying to push immigrants on people i haven't followed any of that no i don't know what he's doing with that now okay. i i know that he did the martha's vineyard stuff and that was just hilarious but he I, sent him up there right right but he's yeah not, he's not sending them to his own people his own not not right now i don't think okay. he's doing i haven't all heard right, anything. that's all that's all i wanted to know I, yeah i, just, I haven't heard anything anyway yeah, of course, yeah, of course, I, he, I regret bringing that up but that's just that's on me of course he very <laughs> clearly said that he would ban tiktok so he's yeah yeah well in montana yeah, <laughs> yeah g and forte beat him to it idiot. all right Hey, look! Oh, when they're when they're all on board and all all together on something, you know that they're all it's it, it, they're all corrupt. And then I got another lemonade piece of lemonade right here, right yeah. here. This is a uh, microchip. It's called ESP32, and it's what I'm building Secure Coop around. Uh, originally, was building it around a device. Device you probably heard of Raspberry Pi, and uh, I was going to build it around a Raspberry Pi, which meant I would have had to make a custom enclosure, which meant I have to build a CNC router, which meant I had to build a 3D printer to make the CNC router, which meant all kinds of just hoops and jumps and expense and, and nasty. And, okay, I was going to do it, but, man, it wasn't my first best choice. But the Raspberry Pi was, like, the only way I could think to really make it do. And um, then the microchip apocalypse hit. Yep. You remember you remember that? And the I'm chips, like, the chips, the chips, chips yeah. The chips, and I'm the thinking chips, to myself, yeah. I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to build it around a Raspberry Pi, and it's and it's like, it's the whole business is facing extinction because of the failure, a lack of chips. So I said, what what am I going to do? I I had originally started on this guy, and the first versions of these were just really tiny, not not enough space for my needs, and so I, I switched over to the Raspberry Pi. But then I, I uh, started looking at them again and said, well, now they've got more RAM and let's try them again. And I plugged it back in and, and got a, got one with more RAM. And uh, it's, it's, you know, now I'm doing, now I'm to the beta test phase. So we're making progress and it's coming yeah. along. Yeah. Yeah. So, is, so is, what's the cost difference between those that are possible? Oh, yeah. That was the best part is the, not, not just the complexity, but the cost is like, uh, just the parts cost is like five times less. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's yeah, a I mean, huge it's a like, Raspberry Pi. I mean, depending on which one you get, you know, is anywhere from twenty to or twenty five to like hundred bucks. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I was looking at the, the zeros, which were um, at the time yeah, those they were cheap. about they're like ten bucks. Yeah, at the time they were like ten bucks, and then they went like unavailable. But then on top <laughs> of that, I had to build an enclosure, and on top of that, I had a bunch of little chips that went around with it. Now this guy right here, 
can do a lot of the same stuff all in the same package. Doesn't need extra chips. So what you should do, Christopher, is you should squat on a bunch of like URLs and stuff. So like all like these brands that uh, focus around like home security or whatever, like like simply safe. Just call it like like <laughs> simplycoop.com or like simply safecoop.com and like nest I do have, nestcoop.com or whatever. Uh, yeah, uh, I do Ring have Coop like uh, all this ten or twelve domains I've squatted. There you so, go. Yeah, I've already got some. Like secure, like, like get what? get some. Simply get safe secure makes stuff farm. for my coop. Yeah, <laughs> I've got get secure farm and other a couple of like secure ponics and things like that. Secure so. ponics. Yeah. Oh, uh, you're gonna move into the aquaponics. Too. I don't see why not. If I can get the stupid core work where it's working like it's supposed to, then it's not too hard to uh, extend it to different sensors. So. Sure. Just gotta yep. get the core right. I actually uh, bought I, a bunch of sensors that I wanted to like build a whole like water monitoring, soil, soil water monitoring yeah. of a raspberry. And I was like, nope, never did it. No. What were you saying, Padre? <laughs> I'm sitting here realizing just how uh, technologically stupid I am. <laughs> no, nah, no, nah, you're, you're smarter for not knowing anything. I mean, there's something don't about, rely on uh, it. There's, yeah. there is a wisdom. You're not going to miss it when it's gone. Right. I, I, was, I think I'm Padre. Not. Padre, was it you that was in the Telegram group? Um, somebody had posted a picture about something about their zucchini or squash that was had some powdery mildew on it, and some bug was getting it. And you're like, it's this, 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 and this. Yeah, that sounds like him. Yeah, so I mean, like, it's like an encyclopedia. It's just like right everything. up here. You're not what you're not. You're not relying on technology. Yeah, it's uh, y'all know where on the school on uh, Twitter. Yep. If anybody has a pest problem, she tags me immediately. <laughs> well, I'm going to start tagging you when I get pissed. <laughs> <laughs> nope, sorry. That one's my neighbor. <laughs> uh, Padre, when the EMP fl flies, then you'll be the, the smartest man around. Yep. How, how will we contact you? Right? A smoke uh, signal. I got Carrier a shortwave. pigeon. What about USPS? Ham radio. I got one. <laughs> I'll just drive there, ask him questions, and drive back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, take him some rocks while you're going. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You pay me this, in rocks. This is a new currency. Instead of the gold, right. silver, it's Montana rocks. <laughs> you need, uh, sand, like you need a new crypto called Rockcoin. Oh, oh, no. Gosh. No no, no more. No more. No more cryptos. Oh, shoot. I got uh, crypto. I got... I got one. Uh, I got another another example of making making lemonade. Um, so last summer, right? We uh, my daughter was in the NICU for two months, and so my mother in law was staying with us. And so I would go to work, and uh, probably like every other, I think it was ended up being like every other evening. I'd go up to Missoula, go see my wife, go see my daughter, come home, and then the the evenings that I would go. I would bring my son with me most of the time. And we called it, well, we were staying at the wrong, but, but we just called it a hotel. Like for as, as much, like for anyone here that hasn't been in the Ronald McDonald house, it's basically a hotel with a big commercial kitchen. So like, there's all these rooms um, and freezers, refrigerators, like all these snacks and stuff. And there's like a little play uh, set for kids to play with or whatever. So like, as far as he knew, like, we were just going to a hotel like every other evening and sometimes he would stay the night and sometimes he wouldn't. Um, but yeah, we just had a, we just had a roll with it. You know, that's the situation we were in, but hmm. and he, he loved it. And he was like, you know, get to play with this toy and that toy, you know, he's spending time week? with grandma. Hmm. How Can we come back he? next week? Can we come back next week? What do you yeah, mean? Yeah, uh, yeah. He, he was saying. Oh, oh, that's yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you yeah. now. Um, yeah. yeah, he liked it. How old was he? Two. Yeah. Yeah, and we uh, we went and saw uh, some friends that actually met through Twitter of all places. They came down from Northern Montana. Uh, they also had a creamy baby, and we went. They were all staying at the Ronald McDonald house. And so we got to go back to the hotel to go hang out with them. We were there for three hours. And so mm -hmm. he, you know, he would eat a little bit, 
go run around to back eat and play and so it was cool wow. yeah no now can i ask why y'all were there like what was what was the you said your daughter was or do you not want to share no that's fine we shared uh we shared it before um so we with my wife's uh medical condition she had like real quick and dirty uh cancer survivor not normal situation down there so all our kids were going to be preemies we knew that if you could make it to 36 weeks that would be like awesome and she did she went to the term that her doctor was comfortable with her going to so um my son he was 10 days in the NICU and we always heard like boys take longer uh in the NICU and we didn't know we were going to have a second time around we wanted to be it to be a surprise so when we was a girl we're like oh man we're gonna be out of the NICU in like no time well the first hospital that we were at which like her doctor goes to or like you know it's a surgeon and all that stuff um that first hospital they like it's more like a convenience store like the NICU is like they're there for like you know quick turnaround of preemie babies we were there mm -hmm. for three weeks and they still didn't have their like stuff together and so they kind of like dicked us around more or less um trying to like no no we can like they're kind of like thinking that they can fix whatever was going on with my daughter like it was this and that and this and that like i honestly lost track it was so much stuff that you know we're trying to solve this wow. problem trying to solve that problem and it all came down to like uh like we don't know so, something something in her throat and they can her like aspirate when she's eating um but the, we found that out at the second hospital and so we had to like have like her in like a special ambulance to move like get to the other hospital across town for the better NICU and all that stuff and that's when we were at the Ronald McDonald house was at that second hospital so yeah it was like a oh wow scary dude it was uh it was a whole thing like I feel like I lost my, my wife and I lost years off our life going through that and <laughs> we got it easy like we we knew there was an end in sight like her life wasn't really like that On in danger water. yeah it wasn't like you know She's on life support, barely breathing, not eating. Like she's eating. She just, her body sucks at eating. Like all the, you know, now, it's right now, man, she's, she's almost a year old and she's eating nonstop. Like I asked my wife, <laughs> she's making tonight, up for it. <laughs> I guess, dude, she is like, you know, she's in like the 10th percentile or 10 percentile, whatever the term is. And so she's like, she was like small for her age, man. She's making up for it. She's constantly eating. Sometimes I think she eats more than my son. <laughs> that's funny it's um there's just there's something about seeing your your family especially your kids in a situation like that and you're helpless as a father and you just it kills you yeah yeah you're just trying to like keep all the balls in there right you know but they're like i i can't fix this can't fix it some it's out of your hands yeah you just yeah Keep the wife happy. Keep the hit kid happy. Try to keep your job. <laughs> Got to pay for all these bills. Yep. yep. Well, at least Fine. your hospital's tried to help. Sorry? I said, at least your hospital's tried to help. My daughter was preemie, uh, born at 35 weeks, I think. Um, allergic to milk. So my wife mm. couldn't breastfeed her. Then, then had a... Uh, severe acid reflux and something else and they were like oh you're gonna need this special milk and we were like okay and and my wife went home the next day with our child i was like here you go she can't eat milk you gotta find this have a nice day <laughs> good luck <laughs> man that's weird wow yeah, what well, mississippi is uh one of the highest rates in the country of infant death and uh mm. death of mothers during birth so our our Delivery system kind of sucks down here. Well, we How old is your daughter now? Uh, she's nine. Or she'll be nine in uh, about a month. We have a saying in Alabama. Uh, not not about this, but just in general. But thank God for Mississippi. So <laughs> <laughs> The joke is that they're last in everything, but they're not. Alabama's oh, last in a lot of things, too. Yeah, we say the same thing about Alabama. So. That's right. <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> Man, hey, I was, in, uh, I was in Mississippi last week. And Jackson, so I, I'm I'm there about once a month. You went to like the most dangerous part of Mississippi. I know. Can't even drink the water there. No. 
If one thing Alabama and Mississippi can agree on is thank God we're not Louisiana. So. That's right. <laughs> it's like that meme, right? <laughs> uh, what do you – so when you have to go to – Louis? Uh, when you have to go to Jackson, yeah, how do you make lemonade out of that? I don't. You don't? You're just like, just I'm here for work. Us. Just I'm here for work, and I'm going to get home as fast as I can. Nah. Unless, <laughs> I'm going to fake COVID like, again. <laughs> unless you're a pipe smoker, there's nothing good now in Jackson. Unless you're what? Unless you're a pipe smoker, there's nothing good in Jackson. <laughs> I don't um, – yeah, there's nothing good in Jackson. No, in fact, my company actually moved out to Jackson into the suburbs of Jackson, and it's much better. I mean, I work from home. Like, I don't have to go over there except for meetings once a month. They could be worse. Jeremy, I'm I, I'm gonna think I'm gonna apply to your company. I I wanna I wanna work from home. I wanna screw off and check my security cameras all day. And <laughs> yep. Can I? <laughs> Wait, hold on. Yep, we're good. Yeah, they're yeah they're they're. Except I don't want to go to Jackson once a month. That's going to be a little difficult for me. I mean, you could probably not go to Jackson. I have to go to Jackson. There, there's only a, hand, a handful of us that have to go there. Like, and when I say a handful, I mean two of us. <laughs> oh, man, that's a that's a small handful. <laughs> Everybody else works remote. How far so, are you from Jackson? I'm in Birmingham, so it's or I'm oh. east of Birmingham, so four three and a half four hours. About the same. About the same. I'm about three and a half hours south. Yep. But, um, I mean, I like where I live. I like Trust Vegas, as we call it. Yeah. Trust <laughs> Good. Hey, Padre, I got a question. I thought you were. Uh, I thought you were going to marry Grant and his uh, and his girlfriend. I thought that was happening this month. Um. Wait. What? So there was a lot of scheduling conflicts that came up mm. mostly around my wife so sure. we uh we were the plan was uh we were we left on tuesday evening and i drove nine hours overnight to get to north carolina and uh going up to virginia that same day we, we i met with agora crops and long story farms and um i think he just goes by rusty news something just goes by his name so we all met up at the big farmer's market in North Carolina and uh, exchanged gifts, shook hands, things like that. And then, uh, and you've never met those guys before, right? No, I had not met any of them. Isn't that crazy how the internet just brings so many people together? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sorry. Anyway, and, keep going. And, Sorry. And just... Gore is one of my favorite people, he, and he's even more awesome in person. But uh, So the plan was, was going up to Virginia that day. My wife had to check in. She had to get her her cords and everything for her graduation and and we were leaving let's see her confirmant was on Thursday the big uh, graduation march with all 20,000 students was on Friday and then we were leaving Saturday morning and going to Helen Georgia we were going to spend two nights in Helen Georgia and if you don't know anything about Helen Georgia oh, um, amazing Helen is great it's modeled after a Bulgarian town it's mm-hmm. all German foods and everything. It's a beautiful area. Um, mm-hmm. We was going to meet Grant then, and we were going to leave Monday and come home. All the hotels, everything in Helen is a minimum two night stay. Uh, right before we left, she gets a call from uh, her now new employer scheduling an interview for Monday morning, which was when we were originally leaving Helen. So um, we had to shift everything around. And then it became, and seeing it was Mother's Day also that Sunday, it just, everything just conflicted with each other. So, sure. Never got to meet Grant. uh, Didn't get to marry him. Marry him and his fiance. (laughs) His current. (laughs) That's current. (laughs) His current. All right. So, I guess the question here then is how do you turn that into lemonade? Oh. Or can you? <laughs> well, we now have a forty thousand dollar a year increase in income to the farm. So, well, there you go. Wow. You know, yeah. she, she got she get she made it Monday morning to the interview. They told her uh, we'll let you know by Friday. They called her Monday afternoon. Yeah, sorry, <laughs> sorry, Grant, you weren't worth canceling that interview. <laughs> yeah, can you unless uh unless you want to give Padre forty thousand dollars? 
yeah. a year. A year. That's right. Yeah. Every year. <laughs> so it, uh, and, and all it is Fantastic. is public school system she's going into. But uh, it's what? It's public school system. She's she's leaving private school and going to public school. Wow. But, I would uh, have miss- thought that would have been the other way around. No, yeah. private school doesn't play crap, at least not in Mississippi. Yeah. But we were, put it, put it this way, we've been po- under the poverty line for the last three years. So uh, she. Uh, it's a nice change. She has 12 years education experience and the doctorate's degree on top of it. And she's internationally licensed. Internationally? Yeah. So she can go, she can go to Europe or China or wherever and teach on wow. her license. And um, cool. Mississippi just redid their teacher pay scale last year, so it would have only been like a seventeen thousand dollar raise last year. Wow! So this year it's forty with with the new the new teacher mm-hmm. pay scale. Mississippi's trying Man. to attract more teachers in. Yeah. So they're even in Mississippi. If you want to be a teacher and you're still in school, they will pay for you to move here. They will give you residency. And let you begin teaching while you finish your degree and get your license. Huh. Well, that's interesting, though. Why the big push for school teachers? Well, the last over the last decade, there's been a mass exodus of school teachers from Mississippi, and it's uh-huh. been over it's been over pay. So, like, if you live where I live, Mobile is an hour one direction, Slide L is 35, 40 minutes in the other direction, and people are still living here, but they're mm-hmm. traveling to other states to work. The mm-hmm. teachers work. So it was, uh, yeah, because Mobile's pretty good from yeah. Mobile. There's just yeah. mass exodus of teachers. The uh, state started getting desperate and uh, passed a whole bunch of education reforms. Got them, got That's away good. from Common Core, uh, finally. Yeah, good. My wife would not have done it if they were still in Common Core. She, she had oh. already drawn a line there. That's so. funny. <laughs> Man, I can't wait to see what kind of stuff that you uh, come up with. Now with uh, not being so, like, just less financial restrictions, Crap. let's say. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, we, dude. We, already, we already have plans. So here's kind of a lemon and lemonade for a, a future lemonade. Um, <laughs> a month and a half ago, our oven went out. And it's like a $300 repair. Sure. And uh, if y'all know, I do markets every week. And our big income is... is bread we, we bake mm-hmm. and bake and sell a lot of bread and some weeks it's you know, pretty good some weeks a thousand dollar weeks at the market some weeks are two hundred dollar a week you never know what you're gonna get in the farmer's market but mm-hmm. um without an oven it's zero dollars a week right right <laughs> so i've been working out of an extra large countertop oven since march and uh wow we decided let's go ahead and look at a commercial oven so uh, just just, uh, just for shits and giggles, right? Bad so we ass. found a Subway oven for eight hundred. Oh man! Wow! <laughs> nice! All right! Wow! So, uh, Does it come with the bread? No, no. But but now instead of a two hour rise time, I got his, his bread's hours. better than Subway bread. All right. Just yeah. Add more sugar. Way more sugar. <laughs> and uh, so I can go from making two loaves of bread at the time to twelve loaves of bread at the time. Whoa! Wow. Nice. Dynamic. That's going to pay off itself very quickly. Oh, yeah. That's yeah, so we, we've already seen an increase in uh, bread sales. So we were doing 200 a week, and then I said some weeks are $1,000 a week. And we realized as, as we picked up a second market, we're about to pick up a third market, and we should start bringing in 1000 a week, which is great, except there's 52 weeks in a year. And I operate under cottage laws, which only allows me to make thirty-five thousand a year. Oh yeah. Mm. So what that has led to so start, is start we now the company. We now have plans to bring a building onto the property and turn it into a licensed kitchen. Hmm. When, I was that, gonna say make your son sell bread. Yeah. So God, he's such a good salesman. But uh, uh how, you see, he's uh, nine. Hey, p- 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 please, no, that's bread daughter. for me. Oh, so I can go to Disney World? <laughs> <That's> just... <laughs> That's all you do, man. Put him out there. P- 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 please let me go to Disney World. Will you buy some bread? <laughs> so now Look, I made Mickey Mouse. We're uh, we're looking by. Hopefully, by the end of the year, we'll have the commercial kitchen built and inspected. 
and that's the goal. And once that happens, a lot of the stuff I sell at market, like my seasonings for my peppers and everything, I will actually be able to sell online nice. and expand that market greatly because I'll be working out of a licensed kitchen. Yes, sir. Post, hey, Sweet. post it when you do. I'll buy some seasonings. <clears throat> okay. Nice, dude. All right. Uh, uh, that's a great – did you have something, Jeremy, real quick? Nope. All right. Awesome. Let's uh, Let's run around. Uh, Christopher, go ahead. Yeah, securecoop.com. I am working on a coop door opener with phone notifications and uh, trying to get this going and as a product. And then uh, after that, I'll be expanding all throughout the backyard uh, space uh, with sensors and, and, and what, whatnot. Keep an eye on your, on your garden and your farm. And uh, aquaponics. And aquaponics, secure ponics. I'm interviewing your competition next next month, so. Go for it, man. They're... they're, they're <laughs> I, I, I'm, and I'm not as good as developers I thought I was, so it's taking me a while. But we're getting there. I'm in the beta phase now. Get on securecoop.com. There is a mailing list to uh, be notified when things are ready. Uh, there's a coupon that you'll get on the mailing list, and there's a coupon below that you can combine with it uh, for the free sale. Nice. Yes. Uh, oh, sorry, I'm editing one thing because I thought it was funny. Uh, Jeremy, go ahead. Jeez. What do you think is funny? <laughs> I'll show you next. Okay. Uh, yeah, I do we like donuts on TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. Chickens, homesteading-ish, prepping-ish, <laughs> life-ish. Life-ish. Yeah, I got a few followers. It's I'm trying to grow the YouTube right now. It's hard. I'm afraid, I'm afraid TikTok is going to just get the... Hmm. I see. Yeah. I hope not. I hope not. I doubt it. I'm yeah. I'm considering YouTube. I just don't know if I want to spend all that time editing. It it's, it takes time. The shorts, the the YouTube shorts are really good because that just, that follows in in line with the TikTok and the Instagram stuff. Yeah. And I can record it like this and not like this. Yeah. But yeah. Anyway, yeah, I'm yeah. looking for better, like good AI tools to just like knock that stuff out real fast for me. Cause I, I honestly, I hate video editing, but the ones that they do now, it's just like pictures, music, pictures, music. And like, you don't actually like know what you're doing. You're just like, okay, I think he's, he's probably just moving rocks again. So I got it next. Just, just change the music. You'll, you'll get, you get a hundred thousand likes. Just yeah. dance, dance a little bit dance. with the rocks. Yeah. And there then, you, you know, dance. With some COVID nurses pass. <laughs> All right, Padre, the Loaf King. Loaf king. The Loaf King. <laughs> instead, of, instead of Liver King, Loaf King. Yeah. I'm a, uh, at Padre Homestead on Twitter, uh, smith-homestead.com. If you buy from me, enter Farm Hop Life at checkout, get 10% off your full order. I've been thinking, I got I to gotta place an order tonight because my dad said that he wanted some uh, like uh, hot sauces and peppers and um, I do too. So I'm I'm gonna place an order tonight. We're we're gonna look at it. There's like nothing on there right now. Well, oh. I'm gonna just message you and say, "Give me stuff." I'm gonna Venmo you. Here's my address. Right. <laughs> Smith Dash. All right. Uh, and I'm Matt Rocher from HopLife.com. Do podcasts, interviews, uh, this men's forum, and TikTok, Twitter, Instagram. Good stuff. Uh, 20 by 23 project. Still working on my last one. 20 so, by 24. It's it's recurring. We're in the first season. That is 2023. 20 by, 20 by 30. <laughs> season two next year. All right. Uh, next week. I don't know what we're talking about. We'll figure it out. All right. Got to go. Yeah. Yep. What was that? I was say one yeah. thing. If you go to my website and order on the bakery page, please pay attention to the ribbon that says local pickup only. Got it. I have refunded a lot of money lately. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, bummer. That sucks. All right. Uh, appreciate everybody for listening. And thank yeah, you guys for being here. Appreciate it. Yeah. See you guys this week. Yeah.